Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Scott with Lamini, and today we announced our Lamini Classifier Agent Toolkit. Uh, you can see right up on, on our site, and as well, there's example resources on our docs page and our examples repo on GitHub. I'm going to take you through a demo and walk you through an example, uh, kind of end-to-end, -end of how to use the Classifier Agent Toolkit. What we're going to do is build the classifier such that we're going to have a couple of different iterations of a model and we're going to be able to classify text. And in this example, we're going to use uh, two classes. However, the purpose behind this classifier agent toolkit is to really get to that specific definitions of our classes even when we're scaling up to the couple of dozen or those use cases that demand 100 or maybe even up to a thousand classes. You'll see in the write-up uh, that we put out this graphic and I think this illustrates why we built this solution uh, really well. When we're in the couple of classes or like under 10, the foundation models do great. However, when we get up into these couple of dozen, hundred, a thousand classes, it really is difficult to achieve any level of accuracy with the context window. And you need a specialized solution. And that's what we've built. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the first step is we create a project and we give it a nifty name. And then we're going to add our class definitions to our model. We're going to give it a natural language description and just some brief examples like we're prompt tuning here and we're going to do that for each class and again we would just kind of go down the list of however many classes that we have uh, as i'm showing you the functionality we'll just stick with two and initially when we're creating this model we can give examples as well so i have a couple examples staged here and then we run our first kind of call here is the initialize call. So we're gonna call our uh, classifier dot initialize and pass it those class definitions and the examples. And this is what's gonna create our classifier. And I have our model ID already available for us. And then we can run dot classify is how you actually run the model. And the output is super helpful that comes back it's always ordered, so the highest probability uh, class is going to be the first one in this list, and then all the other classes after that, in order. And so in this example, we expect account and billing, and indeed, the model comes back, account and billing is the most likely, 67% probability, and therefore, uh, model got this one right. Okay, well, we want to kind of establish a true eval for this model. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can, I have some examples defined here. Let's just run this cell. And now we've established our eval data set. And we actually have a specific endpoint to execute the eval. So given our expected target outputs for all of the different eval entries, let's go ahead and run uh, eval here. And the model goes through each item and, and there's a specific output here. Feel free to take a look at this uh, in more detail uh, running the example yourself. Our output, uh, about 85% uh, after that initial kind of creation of the model. And well, we missed a couple. We can check out exactly which ones we missed and we missed these two. Well, we didn't have that many examples. Let's go ahead and add a couple more examples. And I have some staged in a file that we can reference. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what examples are in that file. They look very similar, right? These are chat logs from a user interaction with a customer service agent or bot. And as we're looking through these transcripts or chat logs, we can uh, kind of pick out the important ones and use them as training data, which I have a couple identified here. So we've initialized the model. We already have one and we ran eval against it. There are still some gaps, so we're gonna add some data. How we do that is we call .add to actually create a new data set 
consisting of the examples that we have in that file. And then we run dot train to actually add these to the model. So let's go ahead and run this cell. This only takes a handful of seconds. And again, I think data sets are atomic. We could have added a couple of different data sets and then trained them all at once. I think it's quick enough where we can just do, we can add one data set and then train and then run eval. And then you can iterate in that cycle. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and that's what we're doing here. So we've added that data set. We've trained the model. You, this is a different model ID, right? It's trained on a different set of data. We have uh, addition, more examples now. So let's go ahead and run eval. And we can take a look at how many are missed. And it looks like we are still getting the same two wrong. OK, so now what do we do? We've ran our initial eval. We've added additional data and we're still getting the same two wrong. So how do we think about higher accuracy? And if you're reading ahead on the screen here, well, a couple of things, right? We just wanna take a deeper look at these two specific examples and identify any common patterns across them and then give those examples to the model or, or give examples that embody the same patterns as these eval examples that we're missing and then we can train the model on those new examples and we should be able to get the model to be better in these two areas right that it's currently missing so i've already done that and i have another data set here that's already ready for us so let's go ahead and check out what's in there um there's a couple of targeted examples here for hey we have a gap in our model's performance we need to close that we need the model to be better in this area so that we can continue automating and responding to more customers more quickly and keeping customer satisfaction up right okay great so we have a data set we can just run dot add again it's the same thing right we're just referencing a different set of data so we're going to run dot add then we're going to run dot train and this is going to do the same thing of add new data train the model and we're going to get um yet again, a third model ID out, right? This is all the same classifier, but we have different models for different iterations that we've trained. Fairly standard ML workflow. And now that we have um, these two models or a third model, we can compare it to our second model. And in this case, great. Our third model is getting one of the failed evals correct now given our targeted examples that we trained on. So we could take a look at which ones it's getting wrong still. And one of the really helpful things about the, uh, the classify endpoint and is that we have the percentages of what each class is. So let me go to the latest classifier that I created here. Let's use the one that we're still getting wrong and let's see how wrong and uh, we can look at all these are all three versions of the models that we we just created and so you'll see well it got a little more wrong at first and then in our latest iteration when we did add those targeted examples it did get less wrong it, it should be policy details right um but indeed it's still getting wrong so we solved one of the miss one of the bad evals and we need to kind of add a couple more targeted examples to uh, solve this last eval that's that's currently still incorrect. So I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys. Um, please go check out uh, the announcement, check out our blog. Uh, we have a nice write-up here on kind of what we built, why we built it, some of the problems that we're solving. And then always feel free to reach out to us, um, comment on Sharon's LinkedIn post, uh, just let us know if you have any questions and we'll be happy to help. All right. Um, I guess I'll pop back up here, but thank you for, for watching. And uh, also you can find me, uh, Scott at Lamini.ai. If you have any questions, um, please feel free. Let me know. Look forward to hearing how you're using it. Okay. Bye.